if you know who Solomon is. Put up your hand if you know who Solomon is. All right. I'm going to call on Nathaniel. Do you know who Solomon is? Do you know what he was? Who else had their hand up? Who else had their hand up? Who else had their hand up? Uh, I'm going to go with Xander. He was a good guy. He was a good guy? What was he, though? More than just a good guy, what was he? Uh, Anaya, you want to help him out? He was a good king. He was a king. Good, he was a king. And yes, he was a good king at first. And except for Xander, and except for Nathaniel, and except for Anaya, does anybody know who Solomon's father was? Solomon's father. I'm going to go with Kaya. David. David, King David. So Solomon was a king, and David was his father. He was also a king. There was something that David wanted to do more than anything else. You see, David, when he was the king, he was walking along. Why don't you put those away, please? This is not the time. David was walking along. and Now, David had a beautiful palace. And he, he built this beautiful palace for himself. And one day, he was walking up on the roof of the palace. And he looked over, and he saw where the house of God was. I'm going to ask this side of the room. Kind of, you okay, honey? I've been um, caught out of my house. You can feel better, okay? I'm going to ask this side of the room. And then if they don't know, then it's going to come back to this side of the room. chests out of cedar but because the bugs don't drill into it and so but it's got this really sweet smell to it and you, you can always tell when there's cedar around because it's got that smell and so David's house was made of cedar it was a beautiful wood a beautiful wood for construction and he said I'm living in this beautiful palace and God's living in a tent 
Now, from the time of from the time of uh, when Egypt left, or from Egypt when Israel left Egypt to the uh, time that David began to be the king was a long time. It was 436 years. Now, 436 years is a long time. That's more years than your grandpa's been alive. Okay? That's how long. More years than your grandpa's been alive. <laughs> he's an old guy. I can say that because he's about my age. I'm joking. More than your grandparents. I can say definitely more than your grandparents because I'm older than your grandfather. <laughs> 436 years ago is even... Let me, let me put it this way. Does anybody know how old the United States is? We are a very young country. As this year, we will celebrate our 245th birthday. 245 years. 436 years. For 436 years, God's house was a tent. And that's, it was 436 years to the start of David's reign. And David reigned four years. Or 40, I'm sorry, 40 years. Oh. Math people, how long is that? 40. 390. No, add, add, add. Oh, 476. 476, 476 years. And David did not get to build God's house. He wanted to. And the prophet told him, he said, go ahead and do what's in your heart. God is with you. But that night, God came to the prophet in a dream. And he said, Nathan, you go tell David, I know it's in your heart to build me a house. And that's wonderful. And I'm pleased. I've never asked for a house. However, because you are a warrior and you have killed people in wars. You have shed much blood. And so I'm not going to have you build my house, but I will give you a son who will be a man of peace, and he will build the house for my name. And David was excited about it. He was so excited that he began to accumulate all of the materials needed to build. Have you ever, have you ever seen a house get built? Yes, yeah, there's an house... apartment did they just all of a sudden start, uh, you know, all of a sudden there's nothing there and now there's an apartment? Yeah. No. No. Because first you see this pile of wood, right? They got to get all the wood together and they got to prepare the base and they got to do all this work and they get all the materials together first and then they start to build. And so that's what David did. David was getting all the stuff needed to build first in preparation for his son to build the house of God. And four years after Solomon began to be the king, four years more, math people, uh, math four people, four thank you. <laughs> after 480 <coughs> years, and Solomon began to build the house of God. And it took seven years to build. And I'm not going to task my math people with this. Well, that, was, that should be 487. 487, yeah. And finally, Solomon built. It took seven years to build. And Solomon built God a temple. Think about that. Seven years. Xander, seven years ago, you were just a newborn. You were in diapers. Josiah, seven years ago, you weren't even around yet. You weren't even there. Arya, seven years ago, you weren't around. You weren't even born yet. That's how long it took to build the house. Think about that. Think about where you were seven years ago. You were like, what, two? Are you nine now? Are you nine now? Eight, so you were a year old when they started building. And finally, after seven years, what year? Seven? Eight? Nine? Thirteen? 
<laughs> so you're what? just getting ready to celebrate your first birthday. Oh my goodness! It's almost Sophia's birthday! And hers! And it's almost Anaya's birthday! And mine! It was a beautiful, beautiful house. They say that the house of God was 45 feet high. Now this is only 8 feet here. But imagine a big building, maybe about like a 4 or 5 story building. Cool. That's how big it was. Now they, they didn't build real big buildings back then because they didn't have, you know, really? for example, when we build big buildings now, they have cranes, right? They didn't have cranes. They, yeah, yeah, they, 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 can make, they can make a ladder. They can make a ladder. And how do you move heavy things? Yeah, that's all they had. They didn't have any machinery. See, we're real lucky now because we've got all this machinery. Back on, uh, what was it, on a Friday. Friday, we went to the uh, Air and Space Museum down in, in Tucson. And they, they had these big planes hanging from the ceiling. And Miss Faith said, how did, how did I get that? Or was it you or was it Lizzie? Lizzie. Miss, it was Lizzie said, how, how did they get that up there? How do they get that up there? Well, they use cranes and they they take the thing all the way up to the top and they fasten it up to the roof. You haven't lived until you've seen this big SR-71 uh, spy jet up above your head. What is that? It's cool. It's cool. Listen, listen. Bug your parents to take you there. It is so cool. It is so cool. He doesn't have that much money. I'm. Okay, I'm, te I'm teasing you guys, all right? I'm teasing you guys. But if you, if you ever get a chance to look, Pima Air and Space Museum is awesome. All right, but that's enough of that. They, they didn't have any of that. They didn't have any cranes. They couldn't do all that. They built all that by hand. If they needed to build all the way up to the top, they had to climb ladders, and they had to take the stuff up with them and put it all into place. And then, when it was all built... They put gold, gold over everything. What are your earrings made of? Copper. But that, it's a beautiful metal. But my ring is made of gold. It's kind of getting a little faded and needs cleaning. Is it, if it's real gold, oh, you guys got married. Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever seen real gold? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful, right? Yeah. Gold is beautiful. And they used a bunch of gold and they, the wood that they built the house of, out of, it says it was overlaid with gold. This thing must have been beautiful. Because why? Because God is awesome. God is awesome and Solomon said that God is so awesome I want his house to be just like that I want his house to reflect how awesome God is and it was can you imagine how expensive that was this is a little just a little piece of metal and the whole ring isn't made of gold. I don't think so. But this costs a lot of money. And that's a tiny little ring. Imagine if all the walls in here were made out of gold. That's expensive. That's expensive. And you see, God blessed Solomon with a lot of wealth. In other words, he had a lot of money. And he was able to build a beautiful house for God, full of gold. And they had all sorts of things on the inside, and they were all made of gold. And inside the, in one room, the, uh, how can I describe the temple? It was kind of like three rooms. You had a court out here, 
for the priests, and you had a court here, and then you had one little room here. This was called the holy place, and this was called the holy of holies, which means the most holy place. There were no lights in there. It was a very, very thick curtain that came across the whole thing. The curtain was six feet thick. Now, I am almost six feet tall. Imagine a curtain as thick as I am tall. It was so thick that there was no light inside because the glory of God was the light inside. And inside, I can't draw, but I, I wish I could, but I can't. Inside, it had a statue of two angels. Teacher. And the angels, let me see, two angels here, angel here, angel here, oh. and their wings stretched out. And right in the middle, what it was stretching out was the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark that Moses built. Now remember, I. I used to say, Moses built the ark, and you guys would all yell, Noah, Noah. No, this was a different ark. This was the Ark of the Covenant. It was a box. Basically, it was a box. And inside the box, they put the Ten Commandments, the real Ten Commandments, the stone that God himself wrote on. On the, Inside this box, they put manna. You remember what manna is? You remember what manna is? It was food. It was food. Manna literally means, what is it? Because they were out in the desert, and out in the desert there's not a lot of food. Right? They didn't have Circle K's. They didn't have Circle K's that you could just stop at to get a soda. I know. Or to get some chips or something like that. There's not a lot of food out in the desert. Especially to feed a million people. And so God caused it, caused this, it, it looked like dew on the ground. And when they picked it up, and it was kind of like, I don't know, it, it, said it looked kind of like wafer. And it tasted kind of like honey. It was kind of sweet. And they could use it to make things. And they said, man, what is it? What is that? But they didn't care because it was something they could eat. And so they put a little bit of that inside the Ark of the Covenant. Why? To remind people. To remind people that God will always provide for you. Whatever you need, God will provide. God will not leave you. He will not abandon you. He will not leave you in a bad place. But God will always provide for you. And that's what the man said. And finally, there was the rod of Aaron. Anybody remember the story of the rod of Aaron? No. What do you think, Kaya? Um, wasn't it where they crossed like, the Red Seas? Not quite. What happened was that these guys, you know, whenever you get a group and they appoint a leader, you know, let's say that I was, I was, here we got a group of kids, right? And I'm going to say that, um, I'm going to make Josiah the leader. And half of you just set in your minds by Josiah. He's just laying there. He's not doing anything. Why, why Josiah? Hadassah is going, he's my kid brother. He's my little brother. I'm tired. And Melody is saying, he's just a little kid. I'm older than he is. I'm older than he is. I'm, I'm more qualified. And Kaya's going, yeah, Josiah, whatever. Honey, you're all right. All right. Don't you be thrown up on me, girl. She threw up on me once. I did it. Yeah. And that's, what is Aaron was the chief priest. Aaron was the brother of Moses. And... People started to grumble and complain. Why Aaron? Why does it have? 
what, what is it? Just because it's Moses' family? We're just as qualified as he is. Why, why Aaron? Why, why the tribe of Levi? Why can't it be the other 11 tribes? They're just as qualified. They're just as holy before God. And so God said, look, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you who I have chosen. And they all took an almond rod, uh, a stick uh, from an almond tree, a dead stick. Each, 12 of them, one for each tribe. And they put them up. And each of the uh, leaders of the tribes wrote their names on it. And the one that belonged to Aaron the next morning had sprouted. It had no water. It was dead. And yet the next morning it had sprouted and it had almonds on it. And they put that in the Ark of the Covenant too. Because God chooses who's in charge. God chooses. So forget my terrible drawing here. It's okay. You're good. Thank you, honey. <coughs> the chief priest was only allowed to go in there one time a year. Once every year. Because he offered the sacrifice for their sins. Once a year. And he better be right before God. Because if he wasn't, God would kill him. Mm -hmm. That's how it worked. That's how it worked. But that was the... That was the temple, and it was a beautiful house that they built for God. It was impressive. I, I would have loved to see it. I've, I've, seen, I've seen pictures of what they think it looks like, because nobody really knows what it looks like. That's right. Aria. Right. Nobody knows what it looks like. They have, an, they have an idea of what it might have looked like. And they've, they've had some uh, pretty neat pictures of it, but it must have been a beautiful thing. And the presence of God. And uh, Solomon stood up and he prayed over everybody. And then they had a feast for 14 days. Can you imagine that? A party for 14 days. 14 days? A party for 14 days. How cool would that be? Uh, it will be so fun. So they were in a good mood. But after Solomon prayed, it says that the presence of God came down. And they were sacrificing animals before God. And the priests couldn't stand. They had to sit down. Because God's presence was so amazing. And God came in. And God is an awesome God. Now... Do we have a temple today? Do we have a temple today? Yes. The answer is yes, we do. Yes, yes. Yes, we do. Do you know where the temple is? Church. Do you have any idea where the temple is? No. Park. The temple of God is right here. It's right here. What? It's right here. You are the temple of God. You are the temple of God. You are the temple of God. You. Me. It's fate. It's fate. Everyone? Everyone. Everybody, everybody. You see, because God lives in you. And you know what? It's only appropriate that the temple of God be as beautiful as God is. The fact that God would live inside of you means that God says that you are beautiful. You are beautiful. And I'm not talking pretty and all that, because the guys are going, God thinks so much of you. God thinks so much of you. He thinks so much of you. He thinks 
so much Everybody. of you that he would live inside of you. That's how much God loves you. Yeah. Don't ever forget that. I know. Don't ever forget that. Look, you're going to have people around you that are saying, you're nothing. Oh, you're, you're terrible. Oh, you're, uh, you're awful. You're not worth anything. Yes, you are. You are worth so much that God would choose to live in you. That's how much you are worth to God. That's how much you are worth to God. You are worth that much to God. That God wants to live inside of you. We are the temple of God. And we are beautiful in God's eyes. We are beautiful in His sight. So if you don't remember anything else about this lesson, that's what I want you to remember, that God loves you so much that He chooses to live inside of you. And He thinks that you are just fine, that you are beautiful enough for Him. He loves you that much. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the temple in Israel that was built, that it reflected your glory. And Lord, you have chosen us as temples, that you might dwell inside each of us. And Lord, I ask that we would also reflect your glory. That the things that you would find important, we would find important. The things that you love, we would love. And the things that you don't love, we would not love. Lord, I pray your blessings on every one of us as we go our way. That we would remember that you chose to live inside of us. And that we are a holy temple before you. And that we wouldn't do anything to bring shame to that temple. Father, that you would bless your name. And that you would be with each of us. Go with us as we go to our homes. And may we be blessed in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.